Welcome to On the Issues with ABC News Senior White House Correspondent Martha Raddatz and the Brookings Experts for a dialogue on policy ideas. Managing Director William Anthola says domestic consensus on trade and climate change can bolster our leadership abroad. In the past six years, you say the U.S. has provided the opposite of leadership on climate change. Mm-hmm. So what does the next administration do? Well, the next administration really has to start with domestic action. Um, one thing that we've learned about these really complicated international challenges is for the United States to lead, we have to lead by example. And on climate change in the United States, there's really been zero action on global warming. Uh, the, uh, the Bush administration has come late even to the idea that global, that global warming is a real problem. They have embraced that finally, and that's a good step. And they've started talking about some small but important steps in that direction, the biggest of which happened this year, which was CAFE standards. Um, But uh, auto emissions are only really less than a third, probably in the range of about 25 percent of our greenhouse gas emissions in the United States. And uh, and even the steps that they took in CAFE will only be a small fraction of what's needed in the fight on global warming. How how do you make the public more aware of this? You you say that you have to bring the public to a new level of awareness. Mm -hmm. Will, Will that just be a change of administration? Well, there's some good news there in the last eight years. I mean, when we say the United States has failed to lead in the last six years, it's it's really the the White House. Um, The public is starting to engage, and that's a good thing. We've seen action in a lot of the states. California has certainly led, and some of the northeastern states have taken steps. But in those states, what you've had are political leaders who are willing to get out there, get on the stump, go around the state, and explain the challenges that it poses to the state. In California, water is, is always an issue. And people are starting to get the connection between longer, drier summers and the difficulty of uh, having enough water for the state. What you need is a president who's willing to go around the country and make the case that the impacts are real and they're now. Um, Whether or not and how much Katrina was caused by global warming shouldn't be a debate. It's that this is a challenge that's making those kinds of weather incidents more likely in the future. When When a president prioritizes policies, issues, where should this fall? There's a lot of debate right now among environmental activists about whether or not global warming should happen in the first year of the administration um, and how that should sequence with the international negotiations that are going on that are supposed to happen in December of 2009 at the end of that first year. Uh, With a lot of Democrats also pushing for health care, there's a debate within the party on global warming first, global warming and health care. in order for the international negotiation to move forward, global warming probably should happen in that first year. The good news on the Republican side is that John McCain, uh, for people that want action on global warming, is that John McCain appears to be the front runner now. And he has embraced the idea that global warming is a real threat and has talked about some pretty dramatic action domestically um, as well as internationally. Uh, let's let's uh, move to global trade. You're, you're full of bad news here. You said the wind, <laughs> is, the wind has gone out of the sails of global trade liberalization. Well, it, it's, it, it is fascinating. You know, 10 years ago, uh, the United States was able to negotiate some pretty major global trade agreements and could get nowhere on global climate change. And at least politically within the country now, it's probably the opposite. There's probably more of a domestic push to the extent that the public's engaged to move forward on global warming than there is on global trade. Um, people fear losing their jobs overseas, and particularly now that we're possibly moving into a recession and with the, not just the challenge in the stock market and the, uh, and the housing crisis, uh, a whole bunch of other international factors are making people feel that their jobs are less secure. And that makes trade a really challenging thing for a president, despite the fact that uh, global trade has led to some of the great economic gains in the United States in the last 50 years, from aerospace to high-tech and computer. Even the automotive industry, which for most of the 20th century drove American prosperity, quite literally, uh, that was because we were, uh, we were built on a, on a global trading system and, and we were exporting cars. We're not doing that anymore, obviously. But some of our, global, our car companies are global operations. Most of Ford's, uh, the positive side of Ford's balance sheets has been from their overseas sales. Uh, General Motors operates pretty well overseas. The, the domestic part of the equation for these global companies is a real challenge. Okay, thank you. Thank you.